First, head over to PCSX2.net and click on the latest stable button. You'll see several download options. Choose the installer version. That's the easiest one to set up. Once the download finishes, go ahead and open the installer. You might get a warning from Windows Defender saying it's a virus, but don't worry, it's a false positive. On the first screen, make sure to select portable installation because it keeps everything, your settings, save files and memory cards inside one self-contained folder. Super convenient if you ever need to back things up or move the emulator to somewhere else. Next, choose your installation location. I recommend sticking with the default path usually on your C drive. Hit next, then next again. Personally, I like having a shortcut of my desktop, so I'll check that box too. Click next again and wait for the installation to finish. Once it's done, you can go ahead and launch PCSX2. When you launch PCSX2 for the first time, you'll be greeted by the setup wizard. First, choose your language. I'm sticking with the default English. You can also change the emulator's theme here. Uh, the default is Dark Fusion Gray, but there are a few other styles to pick from. I recommend keeping Enable Automatic Updates checked, that way you'll always get the latest bug fixes and performance improvements without doing anything manually. Click Next to continue. Now we get to a crucial step, adding your BIOS files. This is important and I have to emphasize this part. You cannot download the BIOS from the PCSX2 website due to legal reasons. You're supposed to dump it from your own PS2 console. That said, many users do a quick Google search to find it online, but make sure you're using a trusted source. Once you have your BIOS files ready, click open BIOS folder and simply drag drag and drop your BIOS files into that folder. Then hit refresh list and if you've done it correctly, your BIOS files will appear in the list. You might see regions like Europe, Japan or USA. In this video, I'm going with USA for the setup. Next, we need to tell PCSX2 where to find your game ROMs. PCSX2 can read different file types, including ISOs, bin files, and etc. Most game ROMs are in ISO format, so make sure that your game files are in the right format in order for PCSX2 to recognize them. Click Add, then browse to the folder where you've stored your games. In my case, they're on an external hard drive in a folder called PS2. Click select folder and PCSX2 will ask if you want to scan that folder for games. Click yes. Now click next to move on. Time to set up your controllers. Controller port 1 is for player 1. Make sure the controller type is set to DualShock 2. To assign a controller, go to Automatic Mapping and from the drop down menu, select your device. I'm using a PS4 controller, so I'll map it to port 1. You can also configure player 2 at this stage if you have a second controller. Keep in mind the X input controllers are Xbox controllers. Once you're all set, click next one more time. Now as you can see, this setup is complete, you can just hit finish. Now PCSX2 will load up and scan your ROMs. Once your games appear, we're ready to move into settings for optimizations. First, we are going to optimize the global settings. These are the settings that apply to every game. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to change per game settings. Some options like enabling patches, including the white screen patches, only appear when you go to the per game settings. So first, we're going to head over to settings, then interface. Under game display, check the box for start full screen. This way, every time you launch a game, it'll open in full screen automatically. You can also switch between update channels here. PCSX2 offers nightly builds. These get updated constantly with the latest features, but they might be buggy. If you want maximum stability, I recommend sticking with the stable channel, but otherwise choose nightly. Now go to the game list section. If you ever add new ROMs while PCSX2 is open, just click scan for new games to refresh your list. In the BIOS tab, you can switch to a different BIOS if you ever want to change the 
one you originally selected during setup. For emulation, don't touch anything yet. The faults are ideal here for compatibility with most games. Now let's jump to the most important section, graphics. If your PC or laptop has a modern dedicated graphics card, anything from the last 4 or 5 years, change the renderer to Vulkan. It offers the best balance of performance and compatibility. If you are on older hardware, try OpenGL or DirectX 12 or 11. Usually for older hardware, OpenGL works better. Under adapter, choose your dedicated GPU. In my case, it's NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti. If you're on integrated graphics, you'll see your CPU listed here instead. For aspect ratio, it's better to leave this on auto if you want the original PS2 experience. I personally prefer auto as well, it works great and widescreen patches can still be enabled separately without any issues. Now go to the rendering tab. The most important setting for your game's look is the internal resolution. Choose the internal resolution based on your monitor's native resolution. For example, I'm using a 1080p monitor so I'll stick with 3x native. Keep in mind you can bump this number up to 12x native, that's around 8k. If you're on integrated graphics or an older setup, start at native and adjust based on performance. In order to make your textures look crisp, especially at angles, you can set an isotropic filtering to 16x. It has almost no impact on performance but looks way better. I also usually turn off dethering for cleaner visuals. Most of the remaining options are better left at their default settings. PCSX2 will often auto detect the best configuration per game. One setting to keep an eye on is blending accuracy. This one is very heavy on the CPU, so only increase it if your system can handle it or if a game recommends it. Under the post processing tab, I usually enable FXAA for anti aliasing. You can also enable Fidelity FX Super Resolution or CAS for sharpening effect. The post processing is mostly up to you. If you want to monitor your FPS, go to the OSD tab and check Show FPS. We're not changing anything on under audio, defaults work just fine. Now let's create a memory card so you can save your game's progress. Click create, name the memory card and leave the size at 8 megabytes. Click ok, now right click on your new card and select use for slot 1. Click close and now we're finished with the global settings. Before we jump into per game settings and enabling widescreen patches, let's upgrade how our game list looks. Right now we're looking at our games in the basic list format, but wouldn't it be nicer to see all your games in a beautiful grid view with cover art? Here's how to do it. First head over to this getup page, I'll drop the link in the description below, then scroll down until you find these two URLs. Here you want to choose between default covers, which are simple clean box art, or the 3D covers which give your games a case-like look. It's totally up to you, I'm going with the default covers. Go ahead and copy your preferred URL, head back to PCSX2, click on this icon with 4 little squares to switch from list view to grid view, then go to the top menu bar and click tools and cover downloader. In the cover URL box, right click and paste the link you just copied, then click start. PCSX2 will now start downloading and applying cover art to all of your games. This might take a few moments depending on how many games you've got. And that's it with the cover art. Now let's get to enabling patches and changing the per game settings. For example, in this tutorial I want to play TNMT2 Battle Nexus as an example. I'm going to right click on the game, click on properties, then on the left panel I'm going to head over to the patches tab. As you can see there is a patch for widescreen and 60fps. In order to enable the patches just check the box next to enabled and that's it. 
it's important to note that not every game has patches, including widescreen patch. Some games might even have multiple patches for things like bug fixes, translations, or even 60fps unlocks. Now let's try another game, Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. First, I'm gonna enable the game patches for this title. Then I'll go ahead and start the game. As you can see in the top left corner, PCSX2 is giving us a helpful tip. It recommends setting blending accuracy to high for this game. Instead of quitting the game, I'll quickly apply this change through per game settings. I'll double click my mouse to bring up the menu, head to settings, game properties, go for the graphics tab and under blending accuracy I'll change it to high. Then hit save. PCSX2 will now remember these settings just for this game. There is also another way to access per game settings. Just hit the escape key on your keyboard to pause the game, then go to the game properties and from there you'll have the access to change the same settings. That's it, thanks for watching. If this video helped you get PCSX2 running quickly and smoothly, make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions or want a specific tutorial next.